All right, we're talking about area of trapezoids today. So a trapezoid has two parallel sides. These two sides are called the bases. Okay, so when we talk about base one and base two, we're talking about the two parallel sides. So how we write base one and base two is just B1 and B2. This is called a subscript. Okay, so instead of an exponent where it's written up here, it's just slightly down to the right. If the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid, then the two non-base sides are congruent and are called the legs. Okay, and um, they're always called the legs of your triangle, um, but if it's an isosceles trapezoid, that means these are congruent. And um, so, if we do a quick sketch here, these are your parallel sides, so they're the bases. If these two are the same measure, that's what makes it an isosceles trapezoid. Otherwise, it's just a regular trapezoid. Find the area of these trapezoids. Determine what the population density is for each figure, given the number of seeds. Okay, so first we have to find the area. Area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases. Okay, we can write that as half of base 1 plus base 2. But we're finding the average of these two. And then times height. All right, um, so what I need, honestly here, is I need this base and this height. So I'm missing two pieces of information. But we're using what we know about special right triangles here to fill in the missing information. So remember 30, 60, 90 is x, x root 3, and 2x is your ratio. So my hypotenuse here is 6. That makes my shortest leg 3, and this one 3 root 3. Okay, and this is going to be the same thing. 3, 3 root 3. Now, this whole distance across is 10. This distance would be 10 minus 3 and minus 3, which is 4. So now I know everything I need to. I have 1 half, 4 plus 10, because those are my two base lengths, times 3 root 3. Okay, and again, we're going to work with exact numbers for the most part unless we have to use sine, cosine, or tangent, we're going to use exact form. So half of 14 is 7 times 3 root 3 would be 21 root 3. And you can put that in a calculator if you want. Um, so square centimeters. To find my population density, I have to take the number of seeds divided by 21 root 3. And I'm going to go ahead and round this um, to four seeds per square centimeter. All right, so that's the first one. On this one, I have my two bases and my height, so I'm not missing any, any information. So the area is one half base one plus base two times height. So 42.5 is what we get there. Square centimeters, don't forget to label. And then to find our population density, we're going to take 178 over 42.5. And I'm going to round that to 4.2 seeds per square centimeter. All right, um, bases, remember your parallel sides. So this is a little bit deceiving because it would actually be these two sides. It's just turned. So I still need to figure out what this base is. And I know that my height is eight here. I still need to find this space. So to do that, um, I'm gonna split it so that there's a rectangle. I know that this has to be 5 if it's straight across and that this is 8. And now I have a right triangle where I can find this missing leg. So if I take 10 squared minus 8 squared, that's 36. So I'm using the Pythagorean theorem here. The square root of 36 is 6. So 6, 8, 10 is a right triangle in our Pythagorean theorem. So I didn't write that all out because you should be pretty good with Pythagorean theorem. If you have questions over how I did that, let me know. 
Um, so this whole base would be 11. So this is base 1, base 2, and our height. So I have area equals 1 half 5 plus 11 times 8 is 64 square centimeters. Okay, so then to find my population density, I'm going to take 204 divided by 64. And that is going to round to 3.2 seeds per square centimeter. All right, trapezoid area, half of the whole Find the midpoint of one of the non-base sides. Rotate the original trapezoid 180 degrees about the midpoint. All right, so it's talking about a non-base side would be either here or here. Um, it, this is an easy midpoint to spot since it's straight up and down. This would be right in the middle. So if I go straight across, there's a midpoint right here as well. Um, and we're going to rotate that. So if this is one, two, three and a half, then you have a half. One, two, three would actually stop here. Um, and then if you connect those, so I'm going to shorten this line. I just doubled the distance, and then I'm going to draw in the rest of my trapezoid. Okay, so this is the same trapezoid, just rotated 180 degrees. All right, so. Then you can find your area of your rectangle. So 7 by 2. So the area of the rectangle is 14 square units. So of the trapezoid is half of that. You take 14 divided by 2. So it's 7 square units. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Halfway through my height is where the midpoint is going to be for my two pieces. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to continue that across. I believe it would stop right about there. Just from eyeballing this little section, I think it would stop right there. And then I'm going to draw in. the rest of my trapezoid. So then you have a parallelogram, but we know through our shearing um, process that that's just base times height. So this would be 6 times 2. So the area of my parallelogram is 12 square units. So my trapezoid I'd take 12 divided by 2 is 6 square units, okay? And you could find that using your normal formula, but this is kind of how we're proving that our trapezoid formula is the way it is. It has the 1 half here. All right, trapezoid area. Another way to show that this is true is to have your trapezoid. So we can also use dissection to just demonstrate our formula. Um, so we're going to rearrange a piece to make it into a rectangle, which are easy to find on a coordinate grid. So it doesn't matter which piece you move where, but I'm either going to take this top piece down here or this bottom piece up here because they're going to line up nice on these diagonal lines. So I'm going to go ahead and move this top piece down here. So I should have three and a little bit so there's my little bit and three units. And then along the bottom, I should just have two units for this top piece. So I took this and I rotated it um, 180 pretty much. Okay, so these two pieces are the same. And now I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by one. Our area would be seven units squared. Okay. And one more. I'm going to do the same thing. And it doesn't matter which piece you move, so let's move this piece up this time just to show that. And I have one, two, three, four, five units I need to add. 
so do that one, two, three, four, five. And then along the bottom, it should be one, two, three in a little bit. So here's your little bit, and then one, two, three. So now you have, oops, and this should have been, you have, if I sheared this so that it was straight, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six by one. So six square units. All right, and if I had moved this piece down, it would have been the same idea. Okay, and this is actually technically a little bit like this because this one's a little bit diagonal also. But if you shear them, you get a rectangle. All right. Your assignment for today are pages 20 and 21. Let me know if you have any questions.